All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the size of the opportunity for our service. So let's jump right into it. My goal for you today is to use the data that we actually have available to us online to determine the best place to operate our business. So you wanna figure out where our operational region is gonna be. By the end of this lesson, we're gonna have all the tools and knowledge necessary to make that decision. All right, so we wanna think, we wanna start off by thinking about who are your potential customers. So we want to break it down to the who, what, uh, where, when, why, how. Uh, we can think about it like this. So who can afford the services? That's you know probably the most important factor. We are not. We're quite frankly never going to get a customer that can't afford our services who doesn't have disposable income to spend. So these are going to be higher income earners with disposable income. So typically these are baby boomers or older millennials, people who are above the age of 35, let's say, probably even older than that. These are homeowners. These are people not renting their home anymore, not living in apartments, townhouses or anything like that. These are people who own their home. All right, so what type of person would need our services? So again, this is homeowners. We're looking for single detached households. We're looking for you know those prime houses that have a lot of upkeep and a lot of maintenance that are needed. Where are they located? In the burbs, the suburbs. Uh, why do they need our services? Well, home and appliances require upkeep. There's lots of of uh, there's lots of things around the home. If you think about just the mechanics of how a home is built, what we have inside our home, our car, uh, around our home, our garden, our lawn, everything to do with uh, our home and our primary location, there's a lot of upkeep there. Everything requires a little bit of upkeep and a lot of people don't wanna do that themselves. All right, and finally, how are we gonna offer our service? We're gonna go directly to them. All right, so our locations can be very important for our business. We're not digital, we're not going around the world, we're specifically focused on one community, one small area within our region, all right? So where can we find these customers? So first we wanna consider options. Where are the options that, what are the options you actually have available to you to actually locate your business? So as a student, you probably have three options. You probably have your parents' house, which is more than likely gonna be your option. It's you know all, pr pretty much all of our options. You'll live at home in the summers. It's gonna be a good place. Next option is our student house. So if your student house is located in a good city, after we do some research, after we figure it out and you wanna stay there for the summer, that's an option. I've done it as well. And last thing is the cottage. So if you have a cottage available, it might be something you want to consider. There's obviously anyone who owns a cottage, it's a luxury, it's not something that's necessary. So a lot of those people have disposable income. And guess what? When you go to the cottage, you don't want to worry about all those chores. So if you can provide those chores and those services for cottage owners, there's a ton of opportunity and value there. All right, so do you have other options? These are kind of the options I've, you know, I think that most of us have. You might have some other options, maybe a grandparent's house, uh, maybe a maybe a friend's house, probably not the best option, but uh, you might have some other options at your disposal. All right, so let's do some research to find out which one is actually gonna be the best option for you. So we wanna think back to our system. Everything we do, we wanna bring our system back into play here. So our system is built around the buyer's journey. So I put together some rough figures here for you to use as guidance just to get an understanding of what we need in our market of what we're going for. So if we're thinking about the need and the problem, for every thousand households, probably going to be somewhere around 20 to 25 percent. I actually got the, the uh, I changed that number up, so we got the number wrong there, but it's 20 percent there. Um, but probably around 200 out of a thousand people are going to actually need the, you know, need the service. So for example, we've got a thousand houses, maybe 20 to 25 percent. So one in four, one in five of those are actually going to need a landscaping services, for example. Next thing is awareness. So there might be a need, there might might be a problem that exists, but there's also going to be a smaller percentage of people that actually actually be aware of alternatives and aware of options that they have at their disposal. That's something that we can work on. We want to make more people aware, but there's only going to be a certain level of people that are aware. And even that stretches beyond just being aware. Maybe they know that the service exists, but they maybe think that it's too expensive. They have preconceived notions about it. So in their head, they're not aware of what the actual market looks like. So we narrowed that down a little bit, probably about 75% of people are going to be aware and can be open to, to uh, you know, a solution presented. So maybe 75% of that 200, then we narrow that down to the actual consideration. So how many people are going to consider? So, you know, a lot of people are going to be aware, but actually considering getting it done, you know, for one reason or another, there's a lot of reasons for that. Maybe they got it done last year. They don't want it done again. Maybe they're getting a new appliance. So for me, it was, you know, barbecue cleaning services, which is what I talk about a lot um, with my old business. And so consideration, a lot of people just thought, you know, my barbecue is dirty, my barbecue is broken, I'm just going to throw it out and get a new one. So a lot of people aren't going to consider it, they'll consider other options. So you'll probably get around 25% of, of those people aware that will actually consider going through with it. 
then the actual decision point. So we got, we're in that consideration stage. So we have people who are considering their options. And when we're actually talking about making a decision, so actually getting the service or getting the product or whatever it may be, probably about one in three will make that decision and actually go through that. So around 33%. And then we get to deliver use. So the decisions, the sale, delivery, and use, we're going to 100% of people who made this, you made a sale with, they're going to then uh, actually get the service. And then probably about 33% of those will be loyal customers. You probably get more. We're going to work on getting a lot more. We want almost all of our customers to be loyal because we're going to provide them such a great experience. But we'll probably get, you know, on average, maybe a third, if we do a really good job, we'll be extremely loyal. So we'll be people who tell all their friends, post on Facebook groups, do all these things to help us get the word out. So if you can look at this from a bird's eye view, we're looking at roughly 12, you know, I would say between 10 and 20 uh, out of a thousand households that are actually potential customers of ours. So that's something we want to we want to think about. We want to bring the system into play here, and we want to think, yo, know, when we're looking at when we're looking at numbers, not everyone is a potential customer. So we want to narrow it down. This is based off experiences, based on some general marketing knowledge. You know, I have a marketing degree, done a lot of marketing stuff. So this is, you know, based on my knowledge, based on my estimates. It's not a clear cut path. It's just based on my experiences and my logic here. So this isn't by any means a formula when I'm looking at, when we're looking at these numbers. All right. So I'm saying roughly 10 to 20 out of a thousand. So that's about one to 2% that will actually be potential customers for us. All right. So this, again, I put this rule here. This is a general rule of thumb for every thousand potential customers you target market. You'd likely be able to convert uh, 10 to 20. So about one to 2% as customers. And there's a lot of ways we're going to talk about throughout the program, how we can increase that, how we can get more specific, but this the purpose of understanding this is just to look at it from a bird's eye view and look at the entire market. So we're going to look at our entire city here. We look at a large scope of a region, but obviously when we're actually in practice, we're going to get more than one to two out of a thousand houses in the neighborhood, but we're going to use this knowledge to pick out the right neighborhoods and just focus on the right people and the right customers. So I just want to make this clear, keep this in mind as we're planning, because again, we're in the early stages right now. We're just planning out, figuring out where we're going to operate, what is the best Best possible opportunity that we have. All right, so one to two percent out of uh, you know out of a thousand customers. So this is a conservative estimate. These numbers may, may change based on where you are. So again, it's going to you know if you're at a cottage, obviously you're not going to have to talk to a thousand cottage owners to get the service. You're going to have a lot higher conversion. You're just going to have less cottage owners to talk to you. Same goes with the residential areas you go to, you know, when you go to a densely populated residential area compared to a sparsely populated, more rural area, it'll change. So that's just some things to keep in mind. We're being conservative here with our estimate. So if we want to bring this to our goal, you know, my goal for, you know, our, our program here, my goal for Matt's car cleaning business, my hypothetical business through this program is to get to $30,000 in revenue. That's what we're projecting. So to get to $30,000, we have an average, let's say our average service is about $150. It's going to be our average service cost. And th so let's break this down a little bit. So if we look at $30,000 divided by 150 average cost, that's going to mean that we need 200 services completed, maybe with new customers, maybe with the same customers. We'll have different ways to get revenue. Maybe we'll have different revenue streams. So this is just a very, very basic example. So we need 200 services completed. So if we if we need 200 services complete, we're going to divide that by 0.01, which is 1%, uh, to get the actual number of potential uh, customers that we need. So if we look at it from the reverse, we get this answer of 20,000. 20,000 times 0.01, which is 1%, is going to be 200. So that's how we get to the math there for those of you who aren't too familiar with calculus. Calculations. So I did that for 20,000. We did that for 10,000 or, or for 1%. We did that for 2%. We got 10,000, 20,000. So we averaged the two out um, because we are going to be in that one to 2% range. So all in all, this gives us a 15,000 potential households that we need in our region to consider it as a good option for our service. Again, this is not necessary. We can definitely make things work if we don't have this and maybe our 30K revenue, we go for a little bit less or maybe we just do you know a lot more for each customer that we do have. So maybe we're, instead of 150 average cost, we're doing you know more than that. We're doing a lot more, we're offering a lot more value with our services. So there's a lot of different ways we can go about it, a lot of different things there. So 15,000 potential households or customers is our very, very conservative estimate of what we want our market size to be. All right, so that's going to give you a fair idea there. If you have anywhere around that, and if you have anywhere between ten and twenty thousand potential households uh, for your market for your service, then you have you're in the clear. You have a really good operational region. 
So this is a bird's eye view. Let's look at it more specifically to find the best regions to focus on now. So for my example with Matt's Car Clean, we're going to look at Oakville, Ontario. This is where I started my original business. And so we're going to look at this as our potential, you know, our potential market. So our closest census data is 2016. So if we look at Oakville's population, you know, 200,000 people roughly. And so we've narrowed that down to it's their 66,000 total private dwellings. So again, this is households, apartments, or, or actually not apartments, but households, ta townhouses, uh, semi-detached houses, all those kinds uh, of households. And when we narrow that down even further, there's about 40,000 single detached households. So these are, you know, the classic houses that you see in a neighborhood where they have, you know, they have their own property, backyard and everything like that. Single detached households, there's 40,500 of them. So we have a massive pool. Oakville is a massive market for this service. All right, and if we want to go a step further to this, we can look at private total private households with a family of four, which is what we will kind of look at for our target market. We are targeting families, but we are we are also targeting you know old, older you know elderly. Um, we're targeting more variety. But if we want to think about it, like you know our service is meant for families. We want people uh, in our target market who support us, who support students, who have students, and and you know who are familiar with that and and more likely to be active citizens and busy. So they need our services and actually having some disposable income because they have a family. So if we look at that, there's about 16,000 or so. So this might be an even better telemarket size, but maybe not, you know, this will give us a good idea, but that still fits in our 10 to 20,000 range. So we're still very much in the clear. It's a great market. Oakville is a phenomenal market. We might not see this everywhere, but Oakville is definitely a great market for the service from this data. And this is pulled from census. So I have the link. You'll have access to the link in the presentation. So you can just so you can see it right then and there. It's a massive, massive uh, page, web page on the Canadian government website. And you just basically filter through to find this information. And so we're going to provide that link. But also, if you just Google, you know, census, uh, household census data for your town, you'll 100% get that data just on a basic Google search. So Google is a great tool, not going to act like it's not there. It's a phenomenal tool. We've got to make use of it. All right. So now let's look at the population and income. So the general rule of thumb is the services can be most popular with household incomes above $90,000 per year. So this is combined income. This is uh, the, the woman and the man combined income or, you know, the, the uh, whatever the household. So maybe it's a single mom, single dad, um, or, you know, a, 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 any sort of any sort of arrangement there with the household. The average is, is a $90,000 a year. So in Canada, as of 2017, if you earned $96,000 or more, you're considered in the top 10% of earners in the country. So that gives you an idea of who we're going after. We're not going after the middle income people. We're not going after the lower income people, not because we don't want their business, but because they likely don't have disposable income. When you're at that stage in your life, if you do make that much money, you likely just have to do a lot of these services that we're offering yourself. You're going to have to reserve your money for the essentials. You might have some leftover money, but you're going to have to live for the essentials. So generally speaking, if you earn $96,000 more, you're in the top 10% and you probably have some disposable income. All right, so if we look at Oakville, Ontario, which is our desired operational area, the total private households with an income greater than 90,000 is 40,000 households. So as you can see, we look at, if we bring this back to the single detached households, we have about 40,000 single detached households and about 40,000 total private households. So generally speaking, it's probably going to be the basically exact same. Anyone who uh, is making uh, 90000 or greater probably lives in a single detached house. That is a general rule of thumb here. And again, this is from the census, the same document on the census data and something that you can do uh, and you can get that information for. So this gives us an idea of the income levels. We do have, you know, generally speaking, people in single detached households who own the house are not renting, generally have some disposable income, but this will give us a further idea of what the income levels are in our town. So if your city doesn't have a big enough market, so if you're doing this research right now or after this video and you're seeing that it doesn't have enough, there's a couple options that you can consider. So the first thing is expanding your geographical region you're operating. So if you grew up in a really small town and that's where you want to operate, you might just have to expand that. You might just have to go uh, to you know a larger operational region. So if you think about, you know, an example comes to mind near me in, in the Hamilton area, if we think about Haldeman County. So let's say you grew up in uh, Caledonia, which has a population of 10,000 people and uh, 
uh, you want to operate there, but you realize, you know, there's not enough market size here. So we want to go to all of Haldeman counties. We just have to travel a little bit more. We're going to expand our operational region. We're going to pick, cherry pick the best places within that whole region when we're deciding, but that's going to be our operation region. That's an example. So you can expand your geographic region. Number two here, you can operate in a different region. So if you do this research and there's just no way the math makes sense or works out, then you can just decide to do a different region. So you might want to do your university town or your college town or you might want to consider your cottage or any other area. So that, that may be something that comes to mind. Third option is operate in your region, but just small, just decrease your sales target. So that might just be a reality. I mean, you might be fully happy to do that. You might just want to be, uh, you want to be local, you want to be in your area, and you don't want to, you know, travel too much. And you're just going to uh, really just focus on, you know, crushing your what's possible, crushing your targets, what's possible in your area. But you maybe won't hit that higher level sales target, which is totally okay. All right, so now let's go a step further. We've done analysis of our town as a whole, our city as a whole. Let's go a step further here. We're gonna use Census Mapper. Um, so we chat about this already a little bit, but we're gonna use Census Mapper, a phenomenal tool to actually find where people are located specifically and finding more specific data about uh, neighborhoods instead of just the city as a whole. So Census is great, gives us a full overview of you know Oakville as a city, but when we look at more specifically within Oakville, there's a lot of different uh, there's a lot of different suburbs, a lot of different areas of Oakville. So we want to go a step fur further, and Census Mapper is gonna allow us to do that. So there's the link. We're gonna give you that link so when we go to census mapper you get to censusmapper.ca here we're going to focus on this one right here which is the medium median income explorer so that's the average income within the area um, or like the median or, or, or sorry the yeah the um the middle income in the area so what the actual you know when you take out all the all the numbers what's the middle number uh so that's that's gonna average it out and it's really good because it just takes really really small pockets like it just takes like literally a couple of streets and it, it breaks up what their average income is so you can do average income explorer median income explorer um, but there's also other things like you can look at single detached households you can do some other things like that maybe you want to look at the low income explorer and just not focus on those areas whatsoever um, so these are, yeah, these are really, uh, you know, there's a lot of different, a lot of different options here, right? I like that trick or treat density, trick or treat onslaught. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, so let's go on to the next. So let's say we've clicked that. It's going to start out west, start in Vancouver. You're just going to have to scroll it over, just dragging your mouse. And so as you can see, we've got Toronto area here. We've got Southern Ontario. So we've got all these areas um, that you can operate within Southern Ontario. So again, we're going to keep going further and zoom in. And as you zoom in, you're going to start to see more and more specific densely, um, densely populated with income here. So it, this is going to show this up here, what the average income is. So the darker blue it is, the further on the scale of higher income it is. And again, the lighter or, or on the opposite of it is the lighter and you just don't want to focus on those. These you don't even want to focus on. You don't even want to think about it until it's at least like dark blue. You don't even want to focus on lighter blue here. You want to focus on just dark blue. So we're going to see this. And when we zoom in on Oakville, which is our area, we can see that there's pockets. You know, Oakville as a town, we got 40,000. Remember, we got 40,000 households that earn over $90,000 per year. And here we can see the actual breakup of where these households are located. So if we go a step further, and actually make a decision on where we're going to focus on. So for me, Matt's car cleaning business, we want to go after the right customers. We're going to stay in Oakville here because there's a great opportunity. And here's where we're going to focus on. We're going to focus southeast along Lakeshore Boulevard so we can see that or Lakeshore Road. We're going to do northeast along Joshua Creek area, which is a huge pocket of nice households here. And then we're going to do parts of central and around Brawny Creek. So this area here, uh, this will probably be you know, an operational region that we can consider later on. But it looks like a lot of our area is going to be here and here. That's a really good. So maybe we're in East Oakville service and that's really our all we need to focus on. To give you some context with my business, my barbecue cleaning business, when I started up uh, in, in my first year of university, we did a, we focused almost entirely on this area, and we did a little bit in this area as well. So we figured out pretty quickly. You know, we started off, didn't use Census Mapper, didn't use any tools, made a lot of mistakes, wasted a lot of time and energy in the wrong areas. But then after we did some driving, we got some referrals to these areas. We realized these were the areas we got to focus on, and you're gonna notice that this is just a map. When you actually get in person, you'll be to see where the best areas are and you might already know in your town you might already have an idea of that and when you when you see those houses when you have that intuition you can go with that intuition because it's going to be you know when you see it in real life it's going to be more accurate than any data that you can find online so 
definitely explore. I mean, if that's something you want to do, even just driving around your town and just seeing, you know, where the, the bigger houses are, the single detached houses, typically the houses with the biggest property. So the lawns and all those things, those are the ones that require the most service. So I want you to remember we've done, you know, we've done an investigation here, but I want you to remember that startups are flexible. We're not going to truly know the best place for our service until we actually operate. This stage is just designed to help us prepare, but in practice, we're going to be flexible. We're going to see the opportunities and we're going to take them. There's going to be a lot of other variables that come into play. There's going to be a level of competition. So you might see a really perfect area, but maybe it's really already, there's another local, uh, local business in that area that really has a stronghold on the region and people are really happy with that. That business, again, that's not going to deter us because we're going to present a better value proposition. We're going to have more value with what we're offering so we can compete with them. That's capitalism. That's the beauty of our countries that we're operating in. Um, so level competition factors in. There's also current your current network. So you might have a current network in one of those smaller pockets of nicer areas or just like more varied in different areas. So you definitely want to use your current network that you have. So family, friends, uh, people like that in your current network are obviously the first bet before we start doing cold sales completely and just meeting new people. Uh, and then lastly, there's other location specific factors. Um, so an example of this might be, uh, let's say you're doing mosquito and pest control services or mosquito reduction services, and you're thinking, where's the best region? Well, probably going to be somewhere where mosquitoes are breeding and mosquitoes are common. So probably in forest areas where there's, uh, where there's ponds and there's little streams and rivers and water bodies, that might be a very important thing. So maybe when you're looking at the highest income areas, but they're more densely populated in a really residential area, no forest or anything nearby, that might not be the best option for your service. So you might want to look at other location specific factors for your service that can play a role. All right, so there's gonna be a couple of things that come up. There's gonna be other things that come up. So this is a high level view to make our decision and move forward. But after that, we're definitely able to be flexible. That's the beauty of being an entrepreneur and having a startup. So your action now is to pick a place to operate your business, be confident with it, move forward with it. There's a lot of work to go. So we're just gonna pick our location. We've done a thorough analysis. Maybe it's just an easy decision for you. You're just like, I'm living with my parents. I'm gonna operate right in my town and that's done, that's it. Maybe you wanna do an investigation, you wanna do analysis that we have here. We've put together the, the system here. So make sure you start off with a higher level investigation, really just looking at some census data and some numbers and then hone that in into specifically a region and then think about other factors and we'll go from there. In the next section, we're going to talk about, we're gonna go further into these other variables and in future sections, we're gonna talk you know, about our competitors, about different variables that come up and, and where to, you know, how to target these areas specifically. But right now we wanna just have a location. We wanna be able to say, you know, I'm Matt's car cleaning and I'm operating in Oakville, Ontario. That's it, that's the decision we want and we'll move forward from there. All right, so thanks for listening, good luck. As always, ask us if we have any questions, post on the network. Once you've decided, post on the network as well, share with people you're going to be operating your business in that area maybe that's going to you know show people that there's potential partners in that area or maybe you want to avoid people competing with you on the network so you want to post that as soon as possible so make a post share it in the network share it in the group and uh, as always if you need some extra help you can always message me all right so good luck